This video, we're going to be breaking down Zombies versus Kiv in the Madden 25 Kickoff Classic Tournament. And uh, this is, in my opinion, the best game of the tournament and the best game to learn from. In my opinion, this was basically the finals of the tournament. Um, I didn't feel like uh, the final, the finals that Zombies ultimately goes on to 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 play wasn't really that close of a game. Zombies pretty much worked him, and we'll, we will break that out, that game down here. But I wanted to do this one on the channel as kind of my first breakdown for you. And John Beast is going to be, uh, John Beast is going to be the Jaguars and Kiv is going to be the Jets. And from a playbook perspective, they're both in Colts. Um, I have an ebook on Colts in our school community. If you're not a member of the school community, in my opinion, it's the best place to get better at Madden, to get better at college football. It's only $10, and for 10 bucks, you get access to all of my uh, breakdowns of the offensive and defensive ebooks for both games. Now, Kiv is uh, the number four seed coming into the tournament, $407,000 in career earnings, obviously a ton of its success, 18 MCS appearances. I think that's a record, but I'm not 100% sure. I think he holds the all-time record for number of live events made. Um, this guy has just been consistent. He's been consistent the entirety. He's been uh, consistent the entire time of the MCS. And, and for that reason, I think one of the best people to learn from in the community. And then John Beast. Uh, John Beast is known as the absolute gym rat. Like he just plays the game more than anyone else, knows a lot more than most people, uh, probably knows more than anyone else just because he, of his sure man hours into the game. And so he's a great person to learn from as well. And John Beast, um, John Beast does go on to win this tournament, and I believe that that is his third uh, his third belt in the MCS era. So that puts him in pretty elite company um, as he kind of chases Henry. But let's go ahead and get to the the game here. Maybe. I also uh, did want to go on record and say I did not like how they did the quarterfinal. I thought that was was really bad. Okay, so first and foremost, I did want to point out a couple things about this. Uh, about this, so the biggest thing I want you to see early on here is these dudes are the stand-up linebackers. That tells you that John Beast is not in the regular double mug. It tells you that he's in the two-four double mug. Okay. Also, John Beast, if you just see from this alignment, he's basing out of a mid blitz. So he's going to base out of a man to man defense, and then he's going to adjust from that. Kiv immediately comes out and audibles to trips. This is in Colts. Probably the reasoning is because he can run some isolation concepts over, over here to the right side, and really just to kind of see how John Beast decides to defend, defend trips because trips traditionally gives man a line. Um, defense has a ton of issues. Again, both of these guys are in Colts, and this is um, you see here kind of starting out man 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 early, and we're going to see kind of the big deal with this defense. Um, take a look at John Beast's blitz setup. Kiv's pass pro is he is sliding to the left. He does not block this running back, so he's sliding to the left to try to take away this a gap. Uh, and I think John ends up sending one, two, three, four. Four? Is he send five, I think? No, it's only a send four. So it's a send four, and he actually puts the linebackers in coverage, which a lot of people don't do that out of this defense. A lot of people just send the linebackers every single time. So you'll you'll see little things like that, and, and that's really what separates, I think, the best, the, like the top ten players in the world from like a top hundred player is these little things that they do through game management uh, and different things like that. Now here's a little route combo out of dagger – and nice little switch stick. The other thing you're going to see in this game is a couple of my big takeaways from this tournament. Number one is is, sw is uh, switch stick. Switch stick is the most important thing for defense. Um, if you can switch stick well, learning learning switch stick, learning constantly improving your switch stick is a, a really key component of defense this year. Um, and here Kiv goes up top, able to hit him over top here. So why would Kiv, uh, why would Kiv run that on a streak? I don't know for sure, but it is interesting. So this deep half, like you would think, and I'm assume, assuming John would probably think that this would play this, but because of how bad zones are in this game, 
the C route will actually pull him out even though he's being played, and he doesn't play his true responsibility up the seam. And so it's just a dot over the top and a big hitter. I think that's a touchdown early for Kiv. So that did not that did not go well. Anytime you're coming out, you want to make you want to make the opponent work. So John Beast career earnings three hundred twenty five thousand dollars. I think he wins this tournament now. He has over three hundred fifty thousand dollars in earnings. His um, MCS titles. He has two belts and he is the number one seed uh, coming into this tournament. Now again, John Beast is in Colts. If I'm I'm pretty sure he's in Colts. Running kind of an old route combo here. A little trail concept does have that streak up top. And notice the defense that Kiv is going to be in. Again, this is super important, but you see Kiv is going to start out in this dollar. And the reason why he's coming out in double safety, double safety blitz, this is a variation of the dollar defense that's on our school site. Because we have the dollar defense, we have the double mug, we have the Colts offense, we have all this stuff on our school site. But that being said, um, he's got this double safeties. So this is going to walk the safeties into the box. And the main reason, because they would normally be back here, by bringing them up, it's going to significantly help defend this little seam streak area of the field. Seam streaks are kind of the best offensive tactic now that the stem glitch has been removed from competitive Madden. And so you're going to see a lot of seam streaks. Uh, You'll see it a lot pretty much on every play. You'll have at least one. Uh, seam streak because they're just super effective. So right here, John goes with a, a, an old school double post combo with this wheel, uh, this flat to kind of work the underneath. And then the other thing is he's still got this streak to be able to throw in that seam area of the field. He does look to the left and he does just simply take his check down read to the flat. And he's going to be able to get out there and uh, kind of get the offense going. Now, uh, you'll see him audible to this bunch strong nasty. This automatically makes now you have a seam streak threat here and a seam streak threat there. Has that running back wheel. Again, you can kind of just, it is what it is at this point, but you can kind of just throw through a lot of zones in this game. And so even though switch stick is super good and super helpful, you can only switch stick, you know, so much, right? So, you know, kind of just being able to find these soft spots in zone in the corner. And you see how he's not able to switch stick on that. One of the things that you're going to see a lot of these high-level combos that are they're going to do is they're going to attack the entire space of the field. They're going to attack vertically. They're going to attack horizontally. They're going to they're going to attack diagonally. Right there, you see a little horizontal strain. We got that wheel route attacking that underneath yellow and that flat pulling them out, and then we're able to throw that running back underneath if they don't have a yellow zone. That's kind of the combo. So. One of the big principles hopefully you take away from these guys is they are they are attacking a lot of space on the field. So, like, if you look at this route combo, let's see if he actually shows us the play. Look at this combo. We have a, a, a flat read. We have this that we want to throw kind of in this back corner, so we're really, really threatening here. Then we also have this on the isolation on the back corner, and then we kind of have, like, this little middle read, that can kind of attack. You see, I mean, look at this. We're attacking both sidelines, and we're attacking the middle of the field. It's just these are what these are the new way um, to kind of respond to switch stick is to have route combos where if you switch stick to one side, you can't really get all the way back to the other side, and that's why you really want your combos to um, attack the entirety of the field. There, you see, he hits an in route, kind of makes a crazy throw with Trevor, and. Um, and we're going to get to Kiv's, uh, to Kiv's second possession here. So Kiv coming out. Uh, obviously in this game, like these competitors know kind of how the game's played. Is really you're trying to just get maybe one or two stops a game. So let's see here. This is the standard four man. You see instant pressure. Gets a fumble. And this should be for touchdown. That's huge. And that's what I was saying. Like that's a huge, huge deal. Now again... We talk about, you know, like what's the meta and why it's the meta. This is a super big important point. Like defense is really hard right now in the game. John Beast is in a defense that, in my opinion, the coverage is really not the best. But why do you run this defense? You run this defense because this defense is going to give you the best chance to get something like this where you get an instant pressure, you get an instant win. Now he's having to roll away from the pressure, but that safety is probably 90 speed. 
And then he's able to come in. He tries to throw it away. You get a fumble. You get a touchdown. Like, blitzing has always been the foundation, cornerstone, fundamental aspect of playing defense in competitive Madden. And it is still that way in this game, even though there's not a lot of really, really good blitzes in the game. And that's why you see the number one seed, the number one player, one of the best players over the last uh, two to three years here, He's in, the, he's in that defense for a reason, right? He wants to be able to send that pressure, and it's a four-man. It's a four-man disengaged defense. It's really uncomfortable to play, and you see you know, why it's effective. Now, another thing, that, another thing that's also really kind of an, another thing that it kind of explores as far as like why do Madden players play certain ways, what a lot of, Madden, what a, what a lot of people also believe from mid-blitz, and you're going to see John, he's basing out of this man-covered shell, it's a pretty aggressive shell, um, you know, just in terms of how he's how he, he's trying to basic. And there you see he gets an intentional grounding. Um, what he's trying to accomplish by kind of basing out of that man alignment is we get a more aggressive, you know, we're going to get a more aggressive. We're going to take away some of those quick throwing lanes. Now, why do we want to take away quick throwing lanes? And I've talked about this for you. I talked about this a lot last year. And there you see Kiv miss a seam streak. You want to take away when you're playing defense, and this is this goes for like playing young Kiv, who's made of four hundred thousand dollars, like a really good Madden player. You want to take away the layups and the three pointers for the most part. You want to force. So when I say layups and three pointers, we'll actually show you on this field. We'll kind of work through these combos here, but we get a fourth and fifteen. Now certain situations obviously dictate a little bit different coverage, like a third and twenty-two. You're just trying to get them to a fourth down. Now you have them in a fourth and long. So now in a fourth and long situation, this is not really a base defense. This would be like a fourth down defense. So if you think about this, like this flat route to the tight end, if you if it's thrown as a flat route, it's really not effective. But when I say the general way that I would play defense in Madden is very simple. Um, let's say our blitz is sending these four guys, and you'll see John do this a lot. My main strategy here is I want to have maybe like a, a soft squat, a deep half, a middle third, an outside third, a hard flat, and then maybe using this guy as like a man up on the slot because he's the biggest threat. But what do I? What did I do by putting that coverage on the field? Well, I am having most bunch bombs are going to – this deep half will take away. This hard flat, because I don't want them to be able to have this layup throw to this tight end, and then I can kind of use her this running back route. Where do I force you to throw the ball? If we're in a coverage defense like this, and let's say this guy's in like a soft squat, right? If, I, if I'm in this, where do I force you to throw the ball? I, you, you're not going to be able to throw a layup throw, which in my opinion, a layup throw is any throw under five yards. Any of this area of the field, I don't want you to throw. And also simultaneously, I don't want to just give you like a one play touchdown or big play. So what I want you to do is I don't want any, in, in general, I don't want any throws over 25 to 30 yards. And I don't want any throws under zero to five yards. I want to make you beat me in the 10 to 20 yard, the 10 to 30 yard range of the field, because those are the throws that typically take the most amount of time to develop. So it times up well with my blitz. And those are, in my opinion, the hardest throws that require the best route combos to be able to beat. Situationally, you will do something different. For example, fourth and 15. Well, now I want to make sure that I don't give anything up kind of over over here so we're just going to basically back up here and we're going to try to trust our blitz to get home is more than likely what you're going to see and then obviously using man ups as well within that defensive shell is always helpful so you see here there's that flat that flat didn't quite get enough depth but this is this is this actually worked out perfectly this is why i'm saying this so watch what happens here so john situationally look at the combo We've got double post, and the big thing we have is we have the speed out. Now, this speed out is really good. The speed out can beat man coverage. And then if this guy, let's say that this guy is in a, a third, it's really hard for anything to defend this, this area of the field. Really what, what you should do, and I don't know that John did or didn't do this, this should be like a cloud flat or soft squat that is like 
protecting the stick so that it actually goes back here. A standard soft squat is going to go about 10 yards and kind of let this thing go, or it's going to match this. So it just kind of depends. I think he probably put this guy in a cloud flat, and cloud flats are kind of broken this year, but I don't know for sure exactly what he put him in. The reason I'm saying that is because, watch, this is why I throw in the intermediate. So this is so you see here, John only sends one. I want to say he sends four. So he sends the four man, right? Okay, off rip, we already know, and it's basically the coverage I said he was going to do. Like it's this guy's man up to the slot. This guy's kind of in a hook curl. I don't know what this guy's doing for sure, but it's basically kind of what I was saying. So in general, at this point in the play, like it's, it's we've only like two centimeter, like very very short amount of time has passed. We already know our read has to be here. It's the only route we can throw. Unless we have just a ton of time, but we don't have a ton of time because of the blitz. So we're sped up, which means this can't develop. And even if it does, the user's here. So the only throw he can make is here and watch how this play, but he has to wait on it because it's an intermediate level throw. It's an intermediate level throw. It's in that 10 to 30 yard range. He has to wait on that throw. The blitz gets there. The throw is there. He could have, if he had time, that's a dot. It's a, it's a dot. It's first down. But because of the blitz, because of the pressure component, he can't throw the route. That's the whole defensive philosophy that I've kind of come to really believe in is take away the, take away the one play touchdown, take away the big stuff over top, the over top stuff, and then make sure you uh, basically force them to beat you in the mid range, force them to beat you in the mid range. And now you see Kiv, jumps in the regular double mug. So he's probably in like the Houston Texans defensive playbook or the 49ers defensive playbook. Now there was a five out. He sent six. You know, you, if you have five blockers and six rushers, obviously six is coming in. It's really interesting to look at John. One of the best things to learn from John is his route combos because he he just he, – he's so good offensively. He's probably the best. I think John might be – it could make a pretty decent argument that he's probably the best offensive player in the world. I think he's he's at least top two or three. So you definitely want to be looking at him for his route combos. Again, I talked about it a little bit before, but right here what we saw him hit, we see him hit the seam streak. So here he sees, okay, literally John knows instantly because this is a third. He knows if the user goes here, which the user has to go here because Kev is sending one, two, three, four, five, potentially even six. He has this inside window where he can just cut the ball off. So you see here, this is why seam streaks are good. Pass leads inside, clicks on, and he's off to a really good start. It's about as good of a start as you could ask for against one of the best players in the world. So let's see how Kiv kind of makes this a ball game. So again, at this point, like John's in complete control of the game. He's already got two stops, which is, I mean, for John is, is amazing. And it's just, I mean, just in this game and the way it plays, he's playing Kiv. He's more of an offensive player. He does, he does play good defense, but he's more of an offensive player. He's getting two stops, he's got to feel like the game's already over. Here he sends six, gets another fumble. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Oh, and Rodgers. Oh, this is crazy. Again, this is such a good explanation of, like, why a blitz is important. Now, why is John sending six? I'm honestly not 100% sure. I would assume – that he's just trying to mess up. So if you if you uh, slide protect and double team, if you double team this guy, a lot of times this is going to stop most of the four man. So once Kiv starts to do that, that's where you send six. And if they send five out, obviously it's going to come in. But also if they do that pass pro, you're going to get absolutely screamed at. And so you see that here. Again, that threat of a blitz pressure super important. He gets the blitz pressure in there. And you get a fumble, and fortunate for Kiv that he is able to able to cover that up. Um, I would assume he's probably trying to throw the ball away, and he's just not getting it out. And they're getting that fumble animation. Here you get a little back off here. Now this notice the kind of coverage that John plays. He plays kind of that drop back coverage where we're going to now force you to take the flat based off the situation. That is third and twenty four. 
And then now we're going to get him into a fourth and 13 situation where basically we're in a protect the sticks kind of defense. That's the whole strategy of the, like that's the, that is the systematic approach in my opinion, to play in defense. You have a blitz where if they, if they, you know, if they take too long and it's hard because these intermediate throws, they take a little bit of time to develop. So that's why blitzing is so fundamentally critical for defense. Now look at the combo here. He's looking for that out route again. That's actually a great throw. Um, and I just feel like John, I think that was actually a protect the sticks and, and Kev just makes a throw, honestly. He plays that cover two. That fades hard to cover in a cover two. And so good decision by Kiv. John kind of a little bit almost too soft of defense there. And now he puts himself in a good position. Uh, or not in a good position, but but a, a position to get back in the game. So here, let's actually see how Kiv gets the stop. Let's back this up a little bit. So John's on offense. Again, John's got to be feeling like super good about where he's at. Kiv's going to be... User in the safety getting a little bit more aggressive there. You see there's that man coverage. That's a crazy, okay. And Kiv's going to basically start playing a little bit more aggressive, sending more pressure, manning people up, switch sticking a little bit more aggressively, trying to trying to get a stop, trying to get the ball back. Because if he, if he needs to get back in the game. So he's in kind of a little bit more of like a desperate sit. Not desperate, but like more urgency for him. And here, look at this defensive play. So, again, all of this happens, and this is so important, guys. All this happens because of this blitz threat. Now, John's blocking a running back. He blocks. So, look, this picks, his up. This picks up this blitz, but now this guy screams off the edge. Okay? So, Kiv recognizes there's nothing underneath. So, I just switch stick onto this middle third, and I take away this throwing lane. And John, while he's under pressure, makes a snap decision. Our tight end's wide open. Okay, it's just a bad read at the end of the day. Obviously, it's easier to see it in my shoes than in his shoes. But he makes a bad read. And this guy's open. And it's a switch stick pick. It's a huge play for Kiv. And I think he's going to get out of there. ETN will catch him. It's a big play for Kiv. So a lot has happened. We're literally only one quarter into this game. We'll kind of see how this gets going here. We'll see what Kiv ends up doing to try to get back in the game. Again, look at these combos. Corner route, post, backside drag. Like they're really stretching the field horizontally, vertically, putting a lot of stress on the user to cover a lot. Um, obviously, with switch stick, you can cover more than you ever covered with your user, and it's still... Super hard to guard. Audible to trips. Looks like he's going to go to the RPO here. Oh, no. He's going to go to the... I love this combo. Got that streak. Tied in. Good read. Just takes his check down. And honestly, this game... Like, if you're playing a good player, I, I do think this game is more of a check down, you know, 10 yard and under type of game. Just because the switch stick can really help help defend a lot of those deep throws got the corner out and again you're seeing like the blitz and john is these these intermediate throws are open but because of the pressure john is able to cover those while still covering the flat right see so send pressure that time didn't cover the flat and that's where i'm saying like that was so you have to understand defensively like that is a layup throw to kiv and the good, the best players in the world, they're never going to miss their flat. They're never going to miss their their quick reads. So you have to defend them, and you have to force them to kind of live in that intermediate world. Like here, that tight end, now he takes it away. Here we get kind of a – I'm not even sure exactly what happened there. I think I think John was trying to switch stick or something, um, and, and in the process, I think he hurt himself. And that's kind of the story of – of, of this game. Um, or did Kiv get another stop? Or we just miss it? Might have messed up my... Yeah. Okay. Let's see John on offense. 
Oh no! Oh, Kev's like, give me my, give me my D line pick. Honestly, Kev looks. I mean, Kev, Kev's good. <laughs> you look at you look at this game, and you're like, man, Kev definitely. John definitely got some breaks. Oh, oh, and he gets it there. And you see again, guys, like, look at this. Look at how these guys are getting stops. Look at how they're getting stops. He sends six. Now, John blocks the tight end. So what happens on a, but the thing on a send six? They can shed. They can shed. Now, Kiv's completely out of position. I mean, this is, this is super open. John is just taking, I don't know if he just drops back too far. I mean, yeah, and you just, I guess he's trying to throw that. But, I mean, look at that. Look at how open that is. And I, I just think it's like, okay, and this is kind of going back to, this is a layup throw. This is an intermediate throw. If you force them to live in an intermediate world long enough, they will start to miss these open reads. I would assume that's what's going on. Um, this is 100% open, but he gets hit as he throws, and it's a D-line pick. So... That's, and that's what you've. Saw, that's how you saw John stop Kip. So it's it really is this kind of forcing intermediate throws with pressure is the hardest way for offense to move. There you see a little whip route, nice combo. That's at a bench pivot. Love that combo. You just put the tight end on a drag, and you have a nice little short read on the right, short read on the left, backside dig. Gonna go to trips here. Let's see what he ends up going with here. Probably that flat, and he just throws it away. I'm not sure why he threw that away. Might have been getting, might have been getting screamed at on that one. So a lot of these guys down the red zone, as far as like red zone combos, red zone plays, you're gonna see a lot of running. You're gonna see a lot of audible to trips, um, trips. This RPO bubble Y pop. This is out of Y trips. Probably just going to run this ball. Oh, he tries to throw that tight end. That was actually he tries to high ball it. So why high ball it? High ball uh, when you high ball in this year's game, much less susceptible to throwing interceptions. Kiv was kind of it's it's obviously a super hard read to make, and so Kiv was just trying to make sure they didn't throw a pick. And he is going to go with the field goal here. But, I mean, Kiv was pretty much out of the game, gets two stops back into the game in a game where defense is super difficult. And so he gets his stops. And, and, and again, notice I'm trying to trying to be super clear with you guys, like there's a reason why double mug is the meta. You can, you can, you can complain about the meta. You can, I don't like running double mug. But the reason it's the meta is because it's the best pressure in the game. And in a game where coverage is terrible, the blitz is really your best chance of getting a stop. Straight up bagging someone, probably going to be very difficult to do. So, and as you see, like he switched sticks to go guard a drag, and it leaves the trail open for 30 yards. Watch Kiv. We'll see here. Send six. Trying to switch stick on the crosser. That was almost a pick. That was almost a crazy pick. And also notice uh, one other thing I did want to show here. If we look back at this play. Um, again, to me, this is kind of interesting, but he's wide open. You know, like your read progression. Like to me, your read progression is you're looking to this seam streak. And then from there you would think we're looking here. I don't know how you miss this. Um, users clearly here. Like to me, this is definitely the throw. And then this is a great switch stick because what does Kiv do? He switch sticks to the third to take this away. It's just kind of interesting. And to me, it's almost like John. I mean, this is open. It's open again. But I mean, this is wide open. So, you know. I think Eccles just makes a 
makes a good play on the ball too. So I mean it it was open, but it is one of those things where I'm saying like John's starting to miss some of these layup throws. Uh which obviously under pressure situation, you know, it's I mean we all we all struggle, right? So here here goes a dollar. This should be the four man A gap. Mm-hmm. And this is, and we have this in the uh, on the school side as well. So, one little tip about this a gap. This a gap. You'll see people run this. It's really good when the ball is on the right hash. Okay, it's hard to block, um, especially with a five out. John tries to five out this with a slide pro, and the a gap still comes in. And then look, this is dead play now, and notice the coverage. Hard flat. What's going to be open? The corner route's going to be open, but the hard flat takes that away, right? The shaded down yellow coming down on this. So you just understand, like, we take away these layup throws. Now there, John kind of honestly really wasn't that open. Certainly shouldn't have gotten 10 yards out of it. There's an intermediate throw, and that and that's a product. Okay, so look. This time, the blitz doesn't come in. The blitz doesn't come in. The user's having a guard like, like this, for example. Now, when you're over here, it's hard to get over here with your switch stick. And so, because John has time, we now have time to make an intermediate throw and score, score at least put ourselves in position to score. So you see kind of how that how that plays out as well. Now, John, let's see what he is here. Single back, wing flex, close stretch. Literally did not work. Um, Kiv is in goal line 6'2". So goal line six, 60 out, 60 out jacks, I want to say. It's probably the, the red zone D. Now that John is in a passing set, Kiv is going to counter by being in his double mug D. It's super hard to throw down here because of switch stick. John gets kind of un, you know screamed at to a degree, and notice even though you're like blocking the blitz, notice how uncomfortable that a gap pressure is. This is why double mug is so good. It's not just that it does come in clean, but it's the pressure that you feel in the pocket as well that is you know needs to be kind of identified uh goes to this play this is going to be a, a old school we got a wheel route here we got a little pull route looking for that running back has the running back throws running back late and it does not catch it and now john gonna have to settle probably for three and so kiv does have an opportunity to be able to just go and half winning in a game where kiv really was was dead to rights. He's back in the game now. Also, notice a lot of audibly and around. So it's run play. Pretty much designed to get the clock moving. Uh, we're going to chew to the two-minute warning. Basically, Kiv is just trying to make sure that this is the last drive of half. He's going to use this time as almost a way to get a makeshift stop on John. There's that flat. Again, that's a layup throw. That's what I would consider a layup throw. It's instant. You're you're gonna you're always looking to that first. If that's open, you throw that. It's easy. Um, and Kiv has done this for as long as I can remember in bunch. I think men 17. I know for sure men 18, but I, I want to like corner strike in men 18. So third and four, chewing. Probably knew he was going to call that timeout. Kind of get himself into a better play call. Let's go third and four, double mug. We'll see if John does here. And a lot of this chess matches are you sending six or you sending four. Kevin expecting a six man. Gets a four man. Good read. And again, notice just how. They're really space in this. There's really space in the field out a lot with their route combos. They're creating a lot of different high low reads. First and ten, ball on the forty two. 
double mug. We got a going to go to trips. Uh, we've basically got a streak. That drag. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. That's a crazy play. That's actually a really underrated play. So right here, there's nobody deep. John switch sticks onto the third, and he's able to run him into coverage and take it away. That's a crazy play. <laughs> That's a really good play by John. Really good user play not to give up a touchdown. On um, really what was a blown coverage. There was no middle third on the field. Going to go with a flip bunch. Notice that nickel corner taking a 20 minutes to – that's another reason audible round. Look at the nickel corner just kind of getting mis misaligned, you know, and that just puts him in a lot of you know, conflict against man coverage. There, Kiv takes advantage of it and gets a nice dot on uh, in that situation. All right, so kind of coming down to the end of the first half here. And I'm going to go to tight open branch return. Got a little. These return routes are really good against man coverage. Okay, I love this combo. Corner route. I love this combo. Good run by Rodgers. And notice these aren't like. The thing with these combos, guys, too, is they're putting routes that work together on the field. Running back wheel is interesting. Motion out, wheel. Going to pour some crisscross. Drag. Good read. And the switch stick, you see. And here we go, John, getting excited, wanting Kiv to go for this. Uh, Kiv does need to at least throw the ball out of the back of the end zone if he wants a field goal. And he does. I think Kiv kind of knew that was what he was going to do. He does. He is able to get a one possession lead going into halftime. So really, really good. Honestly, really good fight by Kiv to get back in this game. He was pretty much out of the game. Um, and now let's get into this long halftime. Let's get into the second half. Okay, so John does get balled half. So, again, this is just how big of a deal it was for Kiv to kind of get back out in front of the game. Uh, a little table route there from Travis. Trevor to Travis, little table route. You're seeing at this point, Kib is pretty much fully committed to double A. John's fully committed to double A. And a lot of this is going to come down to is the blitz, how is the blitz going to do? We're going to try to force you to make those intermediate throws, probably switch stick onto something. You know, but in general, uh, that's what we're looking at. See, it's a lot of hard flats and switch stick. Oh, and that's a high point. And that's why you see these guys high pointing, high pointing, high pointing, high pointing, especially against man coverage. You can high point it really hard to defend. And John is going to be able to come out, get a, get a touchdown on the first drive. And now we're going to start to kind of see this is where things are going to, as the pressure builds, the pressure to get a stop builds. And so you're going to start to see them a little bit different style of adjustments, trying to really almost like sit on things, trying to, trying to, you know, really, and you see there's a six man pressure, another D line pick. This is insane. Another D line pick. Again, look at that blitz. And, and Kiv's probably throwing a wide open tight end route. Like, we're probably throwing the ball to that tight end. And that's a D line, D line pick. Second, second kind of big one. That's the second D line pick of the game. Then I think he also, Kiv had fumbled, has fumbled once and then almost fumbled twice. Technically, did fumble, but he, he picked it up on himself. So 38-27 now, John is in a really, you know, John's in, John's in a two-possession lead. I mean, John's feeling great. Okay. And those are the kind of reads right there, like rolling to the right, throw back cross by left. You kind of live with that. Like, if you're putting good defense on the field, those are the kind of throws they're going to have to make to beat you. And defense is honestly just about making – Making the offense have to – I mean, really, really is about making them work. Here we get a man-to-man -man beater, just a simple streak over the top. Kiv able to hit it. And now 34-38. to 38, And now all the pressure swings back to Kiv to have to get a stop on John because John's up a possession. 
you know, and, and obviously there's a lot more. Uh, these games are a little bit longer than they were last year, at least in regs. But, you know, this is a long game now, but definitely a lot more pressure comes back to Kiv to get a stop. All right, a little run play here from John. I'm not sure why John ran there. He was on a hash, maybe just to work some clock. Go to PA bunch shot with a little seam streak. Going to throw that seam streak. That's his main thing. And I, you see Skimbo doing this. You see a lot of the best players in the world. Like the seams, you have one and a half. This is why this bunch strong nasty. You saw, I mean, John's spent the majority of the game in this. Goes to wide trail with the post. Almost gets switch stick picked. Kid frustrated. Kid's playing good defense. Honestly, Kid probably had the best defense of the tournament that I've seen. If you look at just what he's doing, it's it's better. Four, running back late. And I think, you know, what what makes Kiv's defense good is switch stick. Truly is switch stick. His ability to switch stick, his ability to read the field defensively, switch on the things. Very effective, very good. There you go. Nice read by John. And now John's got 45. And so the 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 thing's gonna swing back to Kiv. And you see at this point, these guys have honestly kind of you know, you're starting to see the offense. You're starting to see the the pace of the offense. They they're starting to know, like, okay, the, I like this against what he's doing. We're gonna go to this. And, you know, we'll running back wheel, Kiv throwing the ball away. And you're also seeing a lot more six man blitzes. And trying to ramp that pressure up, trying to force a mistake, force a turnover. Honestly, if I'm John, though, I, I think you play kind of basic defense. You don't have to. You don't have to really press. You're up two possessions. Uh, Kiv has to has to really push the ball down the field and kind of be a little bit more uh, quick pace with his with his play calling. Another thing you won't see a lot in this game is no huddle. Um, that's because. If you just come out in your basic play, it's the first year of playing Madden in a long time where I don't think there's any runoff. Like you look 135, 134, like the clock doesn't really, there's not really runoff. Whereas if you go into a huddle, there's like a 15 second runoff. So you pretty much never want to go into a huddle. You always want to just come out in your play. There's a switch stick. Kiv sees it. Really nice, easy touchdown. And John trying to get aggressive on that side end wheel. And that's where I think John just, a little more aggressive like situationally you know i just think you know make make kiv have to drive and make kiv have to you know again layups and threes make him beat you in that intermediate space um to me and, and really trust your trust your blitz right there's that flat i'm gonna throw a flat throw a tight end flat right at a flat flat a hard flat and a hard flat just gonna stare at him and that's kind of the state of zones right now That's why you see Kiv. I don't even think Kiv was frustrated, right? Hard flats there, just doesn't do anything. That's just the way the game plays. Now John going to set up a little more pass pro. Got a seam streak. And nothing really doing there. And this is, honestly, great switch stick from Kiv onto that corner route because that would have been open. But that switch stick's able to take that away. Ooh, this is a great pick. And this is this is one of the, I think this is Kiv's second pick like this. But watch this. He's gonna actually switch stick onto the third and cut this off really well. Because what what had John been doing the entire game? He had been throwing that on a third. Kiv puts a third there intentionally, knows John is potentially gonna throw that seam streak, immediately switches onto that seam and just gets that stop. And that's just how crazy this game is, man. That, that's a really, really like 1% of 1% can make that adjustment. Super good play by Kiv. Little rollout. I think Kiv missed the corner. And now Kiv is poised to be able to get back in front of the game, try to get a touchdown here and, and go up by a possession. There's that motion out to the running back. Corner route on the right. Flat route, corner. And there you see again. This is, I mean, such an underrated point, but you got the flat to a degree, but but John really covers the underneath here, forces Kiv to have to make an intermediate throw, the intermediate throw being that corner out, the blitz comes in. 
Corner routes wide open. Probably either throwing the tight end of the corner. Wide open reads, but that blitz makes it so that it's hard to make the intermediate throws, even though the intermediate throws are open, right? The blitz covers, covers that. That's why the, it's so important to have good pressure. Corner out left side, there's that tight end. That's a good read from Kiv. I mean, it's crazy. Look how many yards they passed for. Look at the score of this game. I mean, this is, this, we're not even in the fourth quarter yet, and Kiv's going to have very close to 48 points. Drag, good read. And these are quick reads, very decisive. I got that space. I'm going to take that. And that's really what I think you're going to see is like the open space is going to be constrained a little bit more now uh, just with the, with how the switch stick is going to allow you to switch onto multiple players. But once you switch to one thing, and this is what you're also going to see in combos, like once you switch to, for example, the corner route, you can't really defend the middle. So you have, you have a corner route, you're seeing a lot of high-low reads over the middle paired with a corner route. Good, good playmaker. Got a red. That was a great playmaker from Kiv. Good switch stick from John. But I think offense is a lot more about anticipating the switch stick within your, within your alternate receivers or your, your outlet receivers. This is the trip side end combo right here. So he stems this in route up to a certain position on the field. We have a flat. We have a slant. This guy's going to pull flat zones out to him. This is probably one of the best red zone combos in the game. You see John struggling to defend it, and that was a high point. That was a high point. Had it not been a high point, probably would have been intercepted. That's why, again, value of you know, high point passing. So Kiv's able to go on top, and now John has to answer back. Four minutes, 30 seconds. John kind of needs to score quick, takes that drag over the middle. You're also seeing, I think, the importance of like drags or high-low reads in the middle of the field paired with your primary combo uh, that you have. Here's that running backs open, drags open, lots open right there. Again, Kiv's sending six, playing really aggressive. And, and Kiv's doing that partially. Kiv is calling his defense an intentional way to try to either A, get a stop, or B, get the ball back there, John. And that's, again, that's that high point against man coverage. You just high point it, it puts the ball in a place where only a receiver can catch the ball. Very safe throw. And now the pendulum swing shifts back to Kiv. Can Kiv go score four minutes uh, with four minutes on the clock? And we'll see what happens. Now, uh, Kiv is in a situation you got to kind of decide, am I going to try to make this the last play of the, of the last drive of the game? Those are some of the things. So you see here, good read by Kiv, kind of anticipating that user to go back up to that post. You're seeing one of the big takeaways I have for this, for this um, from this in terms of route combo development, you're seeing a lot of high-low reads over the middle of the field, drag post, post trail, uh, post in or, um, drag in route, right? You're getting a lot of high low reads over that middle of the field combined with a corner, uh, for example, that they have to, because you have to switch stick onto the corner, which allows me to put the conflict over the middle of the field. Or if you're going to sit in the middle of the field and you're not going to switch stick, then I can just take that corner route on that outside. So you're seeing a lot of, a lot of that, right? And you'll see it here probably. You see? High low in the middle. You have drag, drag and crosser. We're looking here. You see the switch stick there, and then that leaves that open. Literally explains that perfectly. So look at this. So the route we're looking at here that's going to beat most defenses is a C route. Okay. Now John clicks onto this to take this away. Once he does this, he can't switch. I mean, it's a very difficult switch stick to go from here, like to this guy that would then cut down here. Like that's a really hard thing to do. So what John's doing is he just takes this away because he has to run with this to take it away. So what this instinctively he does that. And now it's a simple backside. There's no middle of the field defender. That's how you're seeing a lot of people play. That's how you're seeing the offenses be built now is we have the defenders in conflict and then we have a backside kind of high low concept that if they go there, I now have a combo to work on the back end of the play. You're seeing it's basically like this. You have a three-man concept and a two-man concept. A high-low read on one side and then a high-low read in the middle. 
That's generally what we're seeing from a passing perspective. Here we're going to get a run. Now this pretty much cements that Kiv is trying to make this last drive. So he's trying to basically not give John the ball back, and he's going to try to score at the end of the game and end the game that way. Two minutes, 30 seconds, probably another run here. Um, no, okay, so again, high-low read. Look at this. Okay, so the high-low read here, we have this flat. And then what we really have is this drag and this cross with a backside in is basically what we're getting from Kiv. So now look at the conflict here. Look at these yellow zones, and this happens a lot in this game. The yellow zones literally drop back like 100 yards, so this drag is going to be open here. The user is basically taking the crosser. Late read, but he is able to hit that drag, and he's able to get nine yards out of that. It's a lot of that. From what I've seen in this game, that's what we're seeing a lot. They're going to switch stick on the corner routes, and then we're going to put you in conflict over the middle of the field. Kiv going to take this to the two-minute warning, and this is really kind of coming down to be the last possession. So look at this route combo. We have trail um, with a corner route. So look what we have here. We have a corner route that you have to switch stick onto to guard, and then we're going to have the, the yellow zones are going to be in conflict with this trail concept, and we're going to isolate this guy as well. So we are attacking left side corner, right side corner, and then middle of the field. Tack the entirety of the field is what you're seeing with this play. So let's see how this is played. Ends up, and I think Kiv was also calling this because he anticipated man coverage. Man coverage gets called. That corner out right on the right has been – that. That wide trail corner specifically, if you stem that all the way down, one of the most consistent man-beating routes in Madden 25. We break that play down to exhaustion in our Colts offensive ebook, But that, that route combo in our Bears offensive ebook as well because this formation's in both. But that's a super big, um, super big play. Now, again, you see the chew clock. You see Kiv taking this all the way down. Probably going to be a run play, RPO bubble pop. Get the ball to Brees Hall. Able to get a couple yards. But again, kids mainly, you know, first down run, first down's a rundown. We're trying to just take clock, trying to really make this last possession. John Beast at this point in the game has three timeouts, and he will start to have to call them based off of where Kiv gets to on this play. So this is uh, another one of Kiv's favorite plays here. And look at what we have. We have a seam. This is so important, guys. A seam streak, a stemmed corner, and then we have this kind of like in route. And this backside drag, these are, this is literally the combo of the year. This, this right here is what everybody's doing, and this is probably the most effective route combo in the game because they have to switch stick to go guard the corner, and now we're just high-low in the yellows in the middle of the field. So watch how this, watch how this gets defended. We get a, a blocked running back to pick up the pass pro. Now John's user's here, and he's having to take this in round and seam streak. But watch John's user at this. So this is probably a hook curl defender, right? If he switch sticks off to off of him, the corner out. He, you know, so here John actually doesn't switch stick. He actually plays good defense. But now look, it's still conflict because he has to come underneath to guard this. And then he's, what he's trying to do is John is trying to switch stick, and it's hard. He's trying to switch stick to come back up to this in route. He's not able to do it, and Kiv's able to dot him up and then also uses a high point pass to make sure that it gets over the defender that John is trying to switch stick onto. That's like a super high-level defensive play and offensive play within one clip, and you're able to kind of see – Really the Madden 25 meta within that one clip of you have to defend the seam streak, the corner, and this high-low read over the middle. Super hard to do that. Now, uh, Kiv is going to go to – this is my favorite red zone play in the game. This RPO read flat is super good. The tight end is almost always open. He is going to go to this duo. This duo is a really good run out of this. Trying it. Why does he go to that duo? And he's actually going to go down here. Why does he do this? Do You see John is starting to call his timeouts. Because of the situation in the game, Kiv is going to be able to – if you give John Beast the ball back with 45 seconds and a timeout and John only needs a field goal, which is what would happen here, it's literally – it's almost automatic that John is going to get that field goal and you're going to be in overtime. This allows you to have the most control over the game and be able to end the game with your offense on the field. That's why Kiv is doing this. Here, I believe he's probably going to run stretch. Um, this, is, this is a down. You could score here, but 
in all lot in all reality, Kiv's probably not trying to score here. He's probably just trying to run the ball, get down, and say and and, and take John's last time out. So see, he gets down. Look at John calls his last time out. Now we have two two opportunities for Kiv's offense to score. At this point, I do think that Kiv is trying to score. And generally, what you're going to do here is you're going to run the ball on third down and you're going to pass the ball on fourth down. That's generally how you're going to do this. Reason being, if you don't get in on this third down, then you're able to take the clock all the way down to like ten seconds, and then you're going to pass for the game. That's basically the idea. That's basically the strategy here. Main reason Kiv is doing this is because he does not want his defense to be on the field at the end of the game. He wants his offense to be on the field. Uh, John is in 6-1, and we'll see here. See him able to blow up that jet sweep. Super good. And then you see exactly kind of what I was saying. Look at the clock. He's going to snap this ball. He's probably going to literally take it all the way down and take a timeout. So you're going to see here. Good strategy by both competitors. He's going to take this all the way down, take a timeout. And so that's going to put his offense on the field with nine seconds, full play clock. Call your best play for the game. Now, John is in double mug. He's not in 6-1 because he knows Kiv is going to pass the ball. Kiv's not going to run the ball in this situation. Now, I don't love the route combo. I just don't feel like there was a lot of options here. Um, I think his idea is he's going to hit that corner. Ends up just not having anything. John's able to get the pick, and he's ultimately able to win the game and will go on to win the entire tournament. To me, this was the best game of the tournament, the best game to break down, the best game to learn from. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section as well if you want to learn any of the stuff that was that was going on from the Colts ebooks or the dollar or the double mug. We have all of those ebooks available to you in our school community for just $10. You'll get access to all uh, of our offensive and defensive ebooks, both for Madden and for College Football 25. A great game, literally probably game of the year at this point. Super good game to learn from John Beast versus Kiv.